Today I'm joined by Benji Dawes and John Hudson, co-managers on the Premier Mighton UK Growth Fund. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. I'm morning. Hi. And could we start off by uh, if you'd take us through your investment process and philosophy, please? We've got a very disciplined process. We spend a lot of time meeting companies. So we want to do a 360 degree analysis on every company that we meet. And that means not just meeting with senior management and lower management within the company that we're investing in, but also spending time with their competitors and their suppliers. For us, it's really important to understand the sustainability of returns on investment capital and understanding all those different moving parts within the company um, helps us determine the prospects for, for return on investment capital going forwards. Last year was incredibly volatile. How did your uh, risk management process steer you through this? So one of the key things we look for when we invest in our companies are strong balance sheets and strong cash flow, cash flow conversion. Um, and that means our portfolio is pretty much well placed to withstand the shocks that we saw last year with COVID. Um, so com combined with that, me and Benji don't see ourselves as macroeconomic experts. We're very much bottom up stock pickers. Um, and that means we invest in a broad spread of sectors, market cap sizes and valuations. And that makes our, our portfolio rather diverse. So actually going into the pandemic last year, our largest holding happened to be Jet2, the tour operating company. And while that actually had a, had a bad year as a result of its business effectively going into hibernation, um, it was more than offset by for instance, the video game companies that we own, which benefited from people staying at home and playing more video games. So what's been your biggest driver of returns over the recent period? So our drivers tend to be very stock specific. Um, you know, as John said, we, we're not macro experts, and so we're not trying to push macro themes on, onto the fund. Um, and, and therefore, it's the individual stocks and their operational excellence that drives returns. We run a really balanced portfolio, so we've had strong returns from, from numerous different companies across various sectors, from niche retailers like Gear for Music and Games Workshop to LED lighting specialist Lucico, a vet practitioner, CVS, uh, and, and a couple of video game developers like Frontier and Sumo. It's not just about picking winners, it's also about avoiding losers. To what extent has that been important for you? Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting question. We actually did some analysis for a couple of clients at the back end of last year, which looked at our ability to avoid losers um, and, and compared it against some of the, the top performing funds in, in the sector. And, you know, pleasingly, we, we have been able to, to, to avoid losers to a, to a large extent and to a greater extent than, than our peers. And I think that's really a function of, of us having that very disciplined process, not just finding great companies, but really understanding the risks around those companies, managing them in the best way that we can, and making sure, frankly, that we're in companies that are really underappreciated by the market. You, the funds strongly outperformed over the past uh, two calendar years, but they've been very different years um, themselves. How have you responded to changes in markets over that period uh, in a way that's allowed you to stay out front of your competitors? Yeah, I mean, the funds actually out, outperformed over the last three years um, and, and two of those three years have been periods where the, the broader market has, has fallen um, in 2018 and in, in 2020. And so it was very pleasing that the companies um, that, that we own were able to deliver sufficient um, growth and operational resilience whilst having that valuation um, underpin the them being companies that are kind of underappreciated by the market, that they were able to outperform in, in years where the market did both badly and, and well. Um, and, and I think it, it just runs to the heart of, of that discipline process, making sure we're in great companies that are underappreciated by the market. ESG is becoming much more integral to many managers' uh, risk management process. Would you agree that's the case? And 
how does it feed through into your um, your processes? Yeah, I think that that's an observation that's been made uh, across the industry. Um, for us, it's it's always been at the heart of what we do. John and I actually manage the Premier Might and Ethical Fund, um, and that's a responsible fund with ESG at, at its heart. We we want to be investing in companies, frankly, that that are helping to build. Um, the, the world in, into um, a place that is, is fit for us all to, to live in um, and companies that, that support that and that meet the key global challenges of health and education, protecting the planet are, are those that we look to first and foremost um, and there's a high degree of overlap between the holdings we have on the ethical fund and, and the UK growth fund. So what's your view of the coming period and how are you positioning for it accordingly? So, so we're positive when we look forward for both the fund and the economy. Um, when, when we look at the last years, the UK consumer has saved £140 billion more than it would usually do so. So we believe when these restrictions end in June, uh, the consumer is ready to spend. It's not saved through choice, it's saved because it hasn't been able to, to spend. So we think there'll be expenditure across things like travel, experiences, retail, and, and continue to spend on the home. And so there are themes that me and Benji are looking to uh, increase our exposure to. We think it's gonna be particularly buoyant for the UK small and mid cap part of the market. Um, but at the same time, we're making sure that we keep that broad spread of sectors within the portfolio and looking to take advantage of any opportunities as we see them. Yeah.